So let's just talk about what you need to get fitter and what you need to do. It's a source of huge confusion in getting in shape. And what happens is so many people, maybe like you, are just not doing what it takes to get fit. Instead, you're putting yourself through pain, you're either getting bored with your exercise routine, and you're just not making the progress you deserve. So just to get to the basic, why does the body get fitter? The reason the body gets fitter is because you give it a stimulus of which it responds to. Now, if you're new to exercise, this is simple. It could be literally walking up the stairs to the gym. It could be you do a little quick walk up the hill, get out of breath, you lift a heavy weight. You literally could do gardening, for example. You know, you're not used to those positions, those movements for two hours. And the response to that is the body's like, what's, what's going on? And it responds to it. So you come back next week, you're a bit fitter, a bit quicker up that hill. You can lift that weight a bit easier. It's more comfortable to hold two hours in the garden. It happens literally that quickly. Now the real key in the problem with exercise is if you keep doing that same sort of level of stimulus, the body becomes accustomed to it very quickly. Sometimes within a week, maybe sometimes within a month. Definitely at some point your body says, I don't care what you're doing, I'm not gonna respond any more to it. Now this is the tricky bit. You will still feel hot. You will still feel like you're working. If say you're doing a jog, you've been doing the same jog for now five months, once around the park, 24 minutes. The body will still get hot every time you run. You'll still sweat every time you run. You'll still breathe deeper every time you run. It's gonna benefit your health. It's gonna burn calories, but you're not gonna get fitter. You will continue to run at 24 minutes around that lap of the park each time you do it. Same applies to weight training. If you keep lifting 40 kilos for 10 reps, once the body is used to it, it no longer gets fitter. Yes, it's still hard work-ish. You still have to work the muscles. You still get a sweat. It's still beneficial, but you're not getting stronger. You're not building any more muscle. And this plateau, it really is a problem of health and fitness for most people. Because what happens now is people think they just need to try harder. So you just think, I'll just run around that lap a bit harder, more effort, work hard. It hurts. It's not necessary. Or I just need to push more reps, more force. Let me get psyched up. You're looking at the wrong way. What you need to do now is just give it a new stimulus for the body to feel that it needs to respond to it. So it could be you on that lap of the park, you stop halfway around, you take two minutes rest, then you run again. What would happen? You run at a faster speed. Maybe instead of doing 10 reps for the you know, 40 kilos, you drop it down to six reps. You've got a heavier weight all of a sudden, and then the body has to respond. And this is called progressive overload. And because people don't really apply this to their training program, the end result is this whole industry has sort of become focused on hard effort. And what you see with people is they start an exercise routine and they come in really hard, really aggressive, high intensity, high pain, high effort. You don't need to do that to get fit. It's a real misnomer. Where that comes from, because you know, there is a reason why it exists out there, it comes from a few sources. One, it comes from looking at elite athletes. Now elite athletes, they train hard, but there's a reason. Almost every elite athlete you'll ever see, if you just chat to them, even if they're 20 years old, they probably for 10 years have been training five times a week. Even when they're 12 years old, maybe it's play football, they've been going a lot. And then what happens is if you look at your own routine, if you, you know, maybe you're quite good in January, you're quite focused, February to April, not so sure, then you disappear for a couple of months. You're not the same. It's not fair to compare your training needs with that of someone who's been consistent for 10 years. The other place where it comes from the sort of this high intensity approach that everyone starts out with is it's coming from army training. And in the army, it's not just about fitness. You are training soldiers to become soldiers. So yes, they're trying to get you fit in the boot camp when you join the induction process, but they're not just doing that. They're trying to tr toughen you up. They're trying to test you under pressure. They're trying to mold people into soldiers. So again, that influence has come a lot into the fitness industry, meaning people start their exercise routine and they're going crazy. They're just thinking they need to be in a boot camp style. And of course, what happens? Normal people, you just quit. And this is not helped by most personal trainers. Most personal trainers just continue to push this sort of myth. And it's because, a little bit inconveniently, for the normal person, is that it works well for a business model. If I tell you the only way to get results is to work hard, the only way you're going to do it is if I'm there shouting at you, it gives me a good reason to justify why you need to pay me to turn up. Now, of course, I don't take that approach. And I think most people, when they start with me, are very surprised. They're like, oh, I was expecting to be pushed really hard. Not under my watch. I'm here to get you to your goals. So what that means is I need a low, a medium effort, but I need you to do that week after week, month after month. And when you put that together, 
the results are absolutely transformative and you don't need to go down this pain zone that people are so keen to engage upon and promote and so forth. Now, if you're already a regular exerciser, well, let me just put this advice in a practical term. If you're new to exercise, stop thinking it needs to be hard. You need to push it. You do not. You need to be consistent over time with a nice enough effort level, which is less than you're probably perceiving it to be. And then the key is just to progress things as you get fitter. You just get a little bit more directed with your training programs as you go along. And then that means it's literally unbelievable how fit you can get without really ever having that pain that you're probably thinking exercise involves. Now, if you're a more regular exerciser, you need to introduce progressive overload techniques. Depending on your level is how sophisticated the technique needs to go. So you know, if you're close to elite athlete going for the you know, British squad for the Olympics, that's what the sports science industry is about. There are very elite, very scientific methods to use. But most people, they're sort of stuck at a plateau. Now to jump to that next level, we need to introduce something that's gonna challenge the body to want to respond. Remember, just getting out of breath is not enough to think I'm getting fitter in a run. You have to make sure that it's backed up by data on your clock. Same with weight training, same with muscle. Am I actually getting bigger? Am I actually getting stronger? They are signs that you are getting fitter. So you need to introduce different methodologies. That's basically comes back to changing the training program, changing the training variables in some way. Not necessarily training harder because that is limited because if you're in a bad mood, tired mood, you can't do anything about it. So because you could only do your best that day. And of course, real life, we have stresses, we have arguments, we're not so energized all the time. But what you can do through manipulating that training program, changes in volume per week, changes in intensity during that training session, changes in how you progress the program over time, exercise selection, all of this can allow you to push on to that next level on exactly the same effort and depending on how you change it, the same amount of volume or time. So this is what I suggest to you is pick one of those two. If you've not started exercise, you're still inconsistent, you haven't done it, stop being put off by the pain. It's not there, doesn't be needed, is not needed. If you've been going along at an okay level, you're getting stuff done, but you're not getting faster, fitter, stronger, more muscular, then we need to add something in. We need to change something to put you to that next level. If you need questions on that, I'm here, you can ask, but hopefully that's food for thought. I'll catch you soon.